Greetings, all of you. I will guide you on Giasta ni Onondaga. My name is Jake Edwards from the Onondaga Nation. I'm sitting on this panel here to discuss the pandemic of Mother Earth. The pandemic of Mother Earth is nothing new. It began a long time ago. It arrived with the doctrine of discovery. When the people from the over the seas, the big waters, had traveled and lost their way and found a piece of land, what we call Turtle Island. It's known today as North America, South America, Central America. They gave it that name. We've already had a name that we call our mother the earth, Turtle Island. And so as we talk about this pandemic, when these people landed here on these new shores to them, they called it the new world. It's just as old as the Turtle Island all around that we know. And so they were here lost and hungry and sickly and our people, the indigenous people of this land, reached our hands out to them and greeted them. We fed them. What we've noticed, though, is they're strange people. They were strange, although they looked similar. They had hands and ears and eyes and nose like us, but they had a funny voice and they looked odd. And we noticed their actions to be a little strange, too, when they stepped foot on land. Immediately, they pulled out their big, long sword and started cutting away at the bushes to make room for more people to get off of their boat. And we noticed that to be strange because those bushes is a food source for not only our people, but also for the animal life. And they cut it without regards to those berry bushes that were not even ready to harvest yet. And so at the very beginning of meeting them, we noticed something strange of them for them to do that. And so when we talk about a pandemic, along with them on their boat that they sailed and landed on our Turtle Island, they brought with them many diseases. Those diseases affected our people in a harsh way very harsh way. A lot of our people had perished. And what they brought with them is the word that they said was from their God and that this land was theirs because they found no Christians here. They put the claims to this land, this Turtle Island. And some of our people, of course, resisted these words. And there's a barrier of understanding right off the get-go because of the language barrier. And so it took some time to communicate. And so at the very beginning, the communications was food. We fed them, we greeted them, give them fresh water, fresh, pristine water that's very abundant in this land. Today's topic is going to be a lot about water and the fresh and pristineness of water and the ability to reclaim what was damaged as this pandemic grows in 1492, this pandemic of Mother Earth. This panel that's going to be talking will be talking about the legal effects of this up to today, this uh, pandemic of the sickness that's traveling about the world today as we know it. It's a sad thing. We will survive. We work together. We will survive. As human species, we're able to do that as long as we can work together. And that's the whole story of the people finding this land in their lost sea journey as they survived with the help of the indigenous people of the lands. And so as this goes on, this pandemic, 
we had many, many encounters with these people, these newcomers to the land, these people from overseas, where they were from, we had never heard of. We'd never seen anybody look like them, although we still greeted them and fed them. And that's our way. That's our way as, as indigenous people. To this day, we carry on these ways. And so as we, as we talk with them and communicate with them and try to understand each other's different languages, body languages, expressions, and so forth, it's a long struggle. It's a long, hard struggle. So at the beginning of this encounter, this meeting time, the people of America today who are taught in our schools have no understanding of this. They're taught some bits and pieces of the pilgrims having a Thanksgiving dinner with a bunch of Indians. And so you got to remember the communication barrier that was there. The food source the understanding of finding such a place in pristine and comfortable and peaceful living and then to disrupt it, knowingly to disrupt it, knowingly you're coming to land here and claim any land throughout Turtle Island that's uninhibited by Christians. This is the doctrine of discovery. This has to be taught to the American people, to the world, people of the world, to understand what these colonizers had in mind from the beginning. And so in this panel that we're having here, we're going to be looking at some of the effects of this doctrine of discovery of Christian domination. And we're also going to be heading toward what we feel might be a fix for this. And in order to fix any of the wrongs that were caused by this doctrine, we must first understand the doctrine. And where do we begin? We begin at where it was sent from and what their intentions were. And we look at that today in this time and day with our knowledge and our, our speed of information through the internet and, through, and so forth like that electronically. We can understand it if we get the true information of what happened, where we went wrong as a human species, and what we can do to fix it. So in this understanding of history and the proper way that it occurred will help teach human beings a more peaceful, and content way to survive here on Mother Earth, understanding that Mother Earth provides for us, and that each and every day we should be grateful for what we see and what we're provided by her. Even if it's just for one day that we show gratitude to our Mother Earth throughout all the waters, throughout all the animals, all the birds, and all the trees, we give a great gratitude that they're still carrying on their duties. We as human beings have duties also. We have a great respect that we should be sharing with our Mother Earth who provides for us each and every day. And in that way, we will be at peace with ourselves as individual so that we can share peace with our family, with our neighbors, with our nation. And it just expands throughout the world, this sharing of peace and contentment starts with the individual tending to their fire. And so as we carry on this pandemic era of 2020, it helps us look back at the mistakes that we've made, the mistakes as human beings that we've made, and how can we look forward to mend these this pandemic has set us all at home for quite some time. Unprecedented. And so as we sit home and understand what is around us, what of our needs are, what are our abilities at home, we learn to be who we are, we learn who we are, 
We learn to take care of ourselves and our families. Some people in some houses learn to even cook that they haven't cooked before. And because they're home, they confined, they learned the value of cooking. And they learned the value of food. They learned the value of planting. As they're tending to their gardens, today and this day is somewhere around the record of home gardenings because everybody's at home with this pandemic. And so they're understanding, they're getting to feel Mother Earth and understand that putting a seed in the ground is not only nourishing for Mother Earth, but the benefits of the food source that they get in return and then share with their children on how to cook it. It's a good learning lesson for the world, paying attention to your home fire, your home fire, and expanding out from there, helping out the neighbors, helping out one another. This pandemic is valuable in the sense of learning what we've missed out on by going to the grocery store each and every time you needed a meal. And so now this teaches us to get back to our provider, Mother Earth. And it also gives Mother Earth a chance to heal and replenish herself. She's just like us. She can heal. That battering and battering and battering to Mother Earth with hydrofracking and, and oil and coal and all these resources being dug right out of her with no regard to the health of Mother Earth, is has now we're taking another look at it and we're giving her a chance to heal by understanding all of this. These fossil fuels that they pull out, how many gallons of water it takes to wash mining materials and the spoils of mining materials, we should all be paying close attention to all of that. Because if that stuff slows down for even just one day, it helps Mother Earth recover for future generations. So here at Onondaga, Onondaga Nation is Tanatagwanioke is the capital of the Haudenosaunee. We're known by the French explorers back in the early 16, 15, 1600s. And they called us the Iroquois. We're known all throughout the world as the Iroquois. Sometimes we're referred to as the Six Nations. Our own name, our own given name here is the Haudenosaunee. We're the people of the Longhouse. And in the people of the Longhouse, we have teachings that go on to this day from centuries ago. Our governance is still led by the traditional council of chiefs and the clan mothers of Onondaga Nation. We carry this on and we carry on our oral teachings and we share our oral teachings. We, and we help with understanding the environment that we live in by first starting off with a gratitude of what's provided for us and that we still see it's going on today. All the duties of all the species, whether it's a forest of trees, the animals in the forest, the streams that run through it, the sun that shines on it, the moon that dampens it, the stars that carry on their duties, it's all in there in our Ganohanyo. In, in translation, it's the Thanksgiving address, sometimes called. But it's a gratitude, it's a share of gratitude each and every time, each and every day. We don't have our Thanksgiving just one day out of the year. It's each and every day you're thankful for that new day. And we still share that. And we still teach our children that. And it's very important to teach the children of Mother Earth's responsibilities so that they understand their responsibilities to Mother Earth as they grow. And so in this panel that we talk about that we'll be sharing as far as looking into the future is how to help 
it's hard not to put blame on people, but we all understand the cause of it when we pay attention to the facts of science and carbon footprints and extraction methods and so forth. When we pay attention to that, we can look at that and we can all make a difference for future generations. That's our responsibility. That's a given responsibility that we have. Anything you do today in your life as an individual, as a family, as a nation, as a people, any decisions that you do today are to no way negatively affect future generations. It's our responsibility to look out for them, that they have peace and contentment when it's their turn to be here walking on earth. And so as we're here today as individuals, we have a responsibility to carry on the goodness of what Mother Earth provides for us and to make sure that it's going to be here for the next few generations. And each generation will accept that knowledge and pass it on and pass it on. So the decisions that we make today are to no way negatively affect seven generations coming.